Today I'm going to play 100 days in Dreamworld with the scenario Abandoned Fortnite in which your colony begins with a map featuring a bunker. This is a modded scenario from the fortification industrial citadel mod. Go check it out. With Randy Random as the storyteller, he is notorious for giving the player a very random experience. From cargo pods containing pack bags to multiple raids for your base. Sure you have your first raid, but what about a second raid? All on top of that, with an ideology that no harvest on organ use and abhorrent to cannibalism, as harvesting and selling prisoner organs is well known to be very profitable in Revolt. Cannibalism makes the game easier due to the quantity of meats following a large raid. <laughs> Can my colony survive 100 days in a custom abandoned frontline scenario, or they will eat another human being and become savages? And so, let us begin in this multiple series of Rimworld. I have selected 5 special people for this journey. A black operator, a ranger, a chef, a researcher, and an engineer. Starting outside the bunker, they arm up and inspect what's inside. It looks like nobody is in the bunker after checking all the rooms. Despite the dirty floors, everything seems to work okay, although some needed improvement. This pillbox needs some clearing in front of it to improve its line of sight, while this one is just downright horrible. I noticed a sarcophagus with dead bodies. This may be the last colony attempting to live here. I moved them outside the bunker on the ground so they do not take up much space inside the bunker. I also require additional wood so their sacrifice was not in vain. Looking at the generator, it generates 5000 watts of power. Despite this, there is not enough power to maintain the bunker. So I disassemble the nutrient paste dispenser and numerous other items to keep the power on. Nobody likes to eat paste anyway, they give minus 4 debuff for a day. I order them to tidy up the bunker. They are going to live in this area for a long time, so it will be great to have a clean home. Starting the day by clearing the view in front of the pillbox and to the back of the bunker. While doing it, I also drew a plan for the kitchen and living room area. Later, the back area is revealed that this is not just a small area, but it's a giant space inside the mountain. There's also an ancient danger building at the far back of the mountain. I noticed there's a second ancient danger near the right border. This place is getting more dangerous and I need all the resources that I can get. Are you sure about that? Day 2 began. I noticed that I have a free research bench lying around. So I told them to research and focus on microelectronic and mortar. Continue to plan for the kitchen and farming area, I just realized the location of the building is small. That's kinda small. Usually, my freezer stockpile zone requires a gigantic building of cooler and a floor. That's quite big. Scared that it's going to be cramped, I try to use shelf storage. I never used shelf storage before and I hope it will work. On day 3, nothing much happened, just building the farmland and the kitchen area. The colony requires a food supply and the MRE is running low. Day 4 came and I decide to check the ancient danger. There must be something good inside it, right? My colonies take their position and destroy the wall by shooting it. Jackpot! Some Money. advanced components, Money. glitter Money. mats, and other tools. There's also a hermetic crate and a crypto sleep casket. Both can be dismantled for component and steels. The ancient danger is being guarded by some giant bugs, but those bugs cannot outsmart a bullet to the face. After my colony sprayed some bug spray, they move inside the ruins and destroy two hives before they reproduce more bugs. Now, preparing to surround the casket, we will do a little trolling. Opening it reveals an ancient soldier who start throwing hands at Morgan. I don't just CQC throw him to calm him down, but both Morgan and Norris can strike him. Nothing serious, just a burst here and there. This man has some nice stats, shooting, cooking, and social. A worthy addition to the base. Opening the hermetic crate reveals some sort of tech friend. A nice treasured item when I'm going to need it. In the meantime, Morgan thinks they should have a faction name. Much better than a democratic pack of the duh as a faction name. We are a democratic people and we will spread our democratic ways by force. 
the bunker is our settlement name because uh, we live in a bunker. Day 5. They dig some part of the mountain to expand the bunker. It's day 6 already and I wonder when Randy is going to send us some raid. And there it is. In the first raid, 5 people come from the right shore. They were not that armed. My colonies position themselves in the bunker with Norris and Morgan manning the howitzer and pillbox. Norris shot her first shot and it's a miss. A second shot is out. It's missed the rider but it hits an animal behind them. Even after I aim it, it still missed in front of them. As the rider get closer to the base, I reposition Aaron closer to a door. A rider riding a deer is mad enough to chase after Aaron even after Richard shot him twice. He threw the grenades near Aaron but Aaron moved inside and knocked him down next to the grenade. The grenade explodes and Aaron almost got caught in the blast. The pillbox shot the remaining raider who start fleeing and no one is alive to tell the tales and to capture. Everyone is okay with no visible injuries or damaged clothes, just some walls and the pillbox need fresh paint after the raid. On day 7, Randy sent us a flash storm at night. I don't know why he always sent it when my colony is about to sleep. I sent my colonies to extinguish the fire before it spread into the base. They fight the fire until the next morning of day 8. I let the fire spread to the right side. It's fine as long as it doesn't spread inside my base. The Empire sent me a quest. They want to keep a knight from the most ferocious threat of all time. A man hunting rat. I accept the quest but not for honor. Aaron holds his weapon and walks toward Pale. Look at him. He doesn't know what will hit him in a moment. Aaron smacks him down and arrests him on the spot. By doing this, we are now hostile towards the Empire. A surplus trader from Tax Force 141. If you have not noticed yet, I do put some faction mods in this game along with some more mods. Those bundles of mods make the loading time quite long, but hey, we are not playing RimWorld if you don't put a hundred mods in it. Pen later got food poisoning because of an incompetent cooker. Well, he's the one who cooks the food, so it's his own fault here. Then Ruben damaged a wooden dining chair. I will see this message happen after more than Randy Red. On the afternoon of day 10, the people of GitHub Man, uh, Kid Human, not GitHub Man, sending me a peace talk chance outside the base. It's not that far away, so sure. I will send Aaron and Rufus to the peace talk, hoping it went well. Norris has a mental breakdown at night and food binge on the supplies. Richard tries to reason with her but there's too much to handle for Norris. In the afternoon, Richard tried to calm her down but it failed again. Ah oh well, at least she didn't go on a killing spree or explode the base. Aaron Caravan arrives at the peace stop and it's a success. Relation is improved by 69. Not only that, Aaron got 6,000 social experience. Time for the caravan to get back at home. Unaccepted by this peace talk, the garbage gang sent a raid on our base at night. My colonist is prepared for the battle. Norris get in the howitzer, but unlike before, I used the howitzer by manually aiming it. The first shot was out and it hit both of them. The second shot was out and killed a turkey that's sleeping near them. Well. That's why you don't sleep in the middle of the battle. They move around so much, avoiding several bombs, but finally, one of the shot kills both of them. The war merchant of the Red Creek Union is approaching the base at night. On day 12, in the morning, the Sword Beast faction send their regards by sending two people to read my base. No need to use the Houtzer because it's hard to hit them when they run. My colonies get into their battle station while Norris manning the pillbox. The first raider is brave enough to run to the line of sight of both Richard and Morgan. He then collapsed to the ground for a brief moment before being killed by Richard and the pillbox. The second raider was unlucky enough to get hit by an arrow from the trader. Looking at her skills, Winnie is a skilled chef, but she will no longer be an adventurer. She took an arrow in the left knee. I capture her and hopefully she will join us soon. Later in the evening, the caravan arrived safe and sound and we hit compact steel while digging for the production room. 
Construction of kitchen and freezer space is on the way. The shelves are effective for storing food. I moved the stove to the kitchen and added a butcher table so they could start butchering animals. Aaron and Morgan become a new lovers in the evening. I designed the bedroom so my colonists won't have to sleep in the barracks. In the afternoon of day 15, the furry people arrive to raid. They will prepare for a while so it's a perfect timing to use the howitzer. The first and second shot were just near misses between them. The third shot however kills two people and they are beginning the assault. After the next shot kills one more, the rest run away. On day 16 through 90, Randy was not doing much. A settlement needs help on their farm but I cannot spare someone right now to help. A trading opportunity for vegetarian items pops up but I don't have any money. I cannot even trade for the food since my colony also needs it. Clearing room from the clutter, this room will be the ritual room. I don't think Randy liked that because he sent a solar flare and then a man ferret at night. In the morning, a cougar is hunting Richard for food. Bringing Norris and Rufus as reinforcement, he cannot stand a chance against three of them. Now the cougar become their food instead. They are throwing a party to celebrate 20 days of survival in the bunker. But right after the party, a man hunting pack of guinea pigs is attacking the base. Just a minor problem, nothing to worry about. They do not stand a chance against the pillbox. But in the morning, a raid from the GitHub man comes. Perhaps they are the one who send the guinea pigs to test our defense. Get it? Because guinea pigs are being used as a research test. Anyway, the Havetzer effortlessly handles every one of them. I simply need to aim it manually for more precise shot and the last one flees right away. I wondered what was inside the second engine danger, so I attack it in the afternoon. A bear flees towards the shot and gets angry about it. He goes directly into the line of fire and that is his own fault. Opening the wall reveals many cascade and a lone militia member guarding the place. They take care of the militia with ease but the place is quite sus. Not going to risk opening the cascade, I order them to shoot it from far away. Aaron with his sniper snaps one of the cascade and it reveals our six heavily armed hostile ancient soldiers. Fighting in the open is a no-no and so I ordered my colonists to fall back to the bunker hoping they might follow them. One of the soldiers is a speedy boy and catch up with my colonists, but then he vomits on the shore first while also receiving some bullets. With the help of Hoitzer and the pillbox, the bunker comes victorious in this battle, although Richard and Rufus sustain some injury. One of the soldiers is still alive with great shooting and melee skills but is a damage. No worries, he will be a nice addition soldier to the base. When he is being tended by Norris, she has a metal breakdown, leaving the man bleeding heavily. He would die in 5 seconds if Rufus hadn't applied a first aid to stop the bleeding. Norris, you need to tell me when you are going to have a mental break dance next time. Day 22 to 24, Ruben and Winnie join the colony. While opening the quest tabs, I noticed that I have a one available quest for refugees. They like to stay in my colony for a few days. In return, they will work and fight for free. I will accept several refugees on our base. It's nice to have some more helping hands around. Day 25, there's a caravan of animal wandering in. After that, nothing much happens. My refugee Jenny crafts a sculpture on the art bench. And after some time later, it finishes its first sculpture. I invite you to read together the description of this art. <clears throat> the name is a vomit of Norris. On this carving is a depiction of Norris getting a drink from Aaron with a friendly smile. The area is decorated with red and blue. A lemur stands in the background. The work is executed in an abstract style. This image tells the story of Norris attending Aaron party on the 11th of Jugus, 5500. Day 26. A recon sniper is deserting the empire and wants to join my colony. He is a hustler, a capable fighter with great shooting and melee skills. But one part I haven't read is they have a genetic dependence on Gojus. 
I prepared the defense for the incoming raid. Trying to land a shot when they arrived with drop pods, but the shot just missed between them. The rest are just more misses, but one lucky shell kills one of them. These soldiers move fast and I cannot predict their movement. They are using the arriving trader as a shield, making it difficult for my colonists to shoot them. I told my Houser to shoot the one who was far away from the base since I was afraid it blew up the trader. These soldiers are elite ones, even almost full burst from the pillbox enough to kill one of them. The game told me that I hit one of the Red Creek Union. The raid comes to an end after another soldier die. It can be tough to fight the Empire if all the soldiers are like this. I need to up the defense and move the traders so they don't stand in our way. I changed the research top priority to go juice because sight and neuro plants really need a long time to grow. It's a diplomatic marriage for Richardson from the Red Creek Union. I reject their deals because Richard is still important to me. Drought set in, slowing down our farm with a growing speed of 200% to 70%. Focus on building the retail room for my colony. They also complete the drop production and pesticide refining. On day 39, the refugees thanked us for the, our generosity and then left the faction. While making this script, I wonder why I let them go in the first place. I should just capture them for their skills. But anyway, day 30, raid from the sword beasts. Like always, I use the howitzer while they are taking their time. The first and second shot kills or knock down several riders. With this motivation, they attack the base. Our colonist is ready, and after only two more people are killed, they run away. But the howitzer is thirsty for blood and adding two more kills on her kill list. I order her to stand down because the barrel durability running low. There is one raider who survived the Houtzer. He has some decent skills in shooting and melee but is in horrible shape. I send Norris to rescue him before he bled to death. But as he get up, he strikes her. Norris can strike him twice and immediately kills him. Norris then takes a winning breakfast while watching the sea. On day 31, I never expect an extortion demand from the fire home faction. They feel like that I am endangering their farm work site. I reject the deal and immediately after that they sent a raid. Norris is back in the Houtzer and nature is with me this time. A timber wolf attacked the group to delay the raid. There's a perfect spot where four of them stand side by side. Again, we win by the Houtzer, but the Houtzer used too much of its barrel. It needs a reinforced barrel while I don't have a colonist with crafting level 15 yet. In the meantime, I told Norris to arrest and first aid the remaining raiders, but, but one of them is unwaveringly loyal to their faction. They cannot get recruited and cannot get changed their ideology. Don't worry, I have one trick to solve that problem, and it only requires a chair and a TV. Menantar pack on day 32, just two tigers, nothing much of a danger. Completing the ritual room so they stop complaining about it. Filling the commissar role with Richard so they also stop complaining about it. A war merchant from the Red Creek Union comes again. I sell them some statues because I have a plan but... We just need money. Wendy sent me a psych drone low for males and then a mad bomo look inside the base that is close to the farm. I don't want it to explode near the farm, so I cut it away while also disabling my colonies to fire. But then Asli, with just one precise burst from the rifle, knocked the boomulup down. The boomulup is far just enough from the farm when it explodes, but it also hit his friend. Like a time bomb that has wheels, it runs away around the farm. Thankfully, it's down far away from the farm. I kill it before he explodes and harms my colonies. On day 36 in the evening, there's a faction assault between the ranger and the people of GitHub Men. We are just gonna stand by and watch the battle from afar. When they are both ready, they start the fight. They are closing on each other and about to meet when the ranger tries to cross the shores. But because of their weapons, the ranger shot first. Two men from the GitHub Men tanking the shot for the rest of his team. Oh, what is this? A missed shot from the ranger hit bad and instantly killed him. The ranger and the github men are now engaged in close quarter fighting who's gonna win the manly battle. 
A lone ranger distracts most of the GitHub main members, allowing the others to fire their guns, but the lone ranger is killed in the battle. They continue their fight in close combat, but the ranger still has the upper hand because of their weaponry. And just like that, the ranger wins the battle and escapes with the loot. Right after the battle, incoming raid from the Furi people again. By the looks of it, they are inspired by the faction assault from before and so they want to try it themselves. All soldiers manning the station are ready to fight. The first man's casualty is a pick, followed by the first man bravely charged but could not withstand the bullets from the pillbox. The second and third man are also not lucky and shredded by the pillbox. Shoot far or short, the pillbox is superior in any of these range. The last man is fleeing but not before the pillbox get her chance to shoot through the walls. Is that even legal? I don't know, but what I know is the pillbox is MVP in this battle. Nothing much happens on day 37, only some conquests, a visitor, and a new lovers of Ruben and Norris. On day 38, Phil resocialization offered to the bunker. He calmed himself down by fishing and accept that being a knight is a tiring job. Why does he need to work hard to manage others anyway? While well, he can lay back and relax. It's a nice day for fishing, isn't it? And then Randy being Randy, throws a cold snap in the middle of the night, killing all of my plants immediately. The outer temperature is hitting below minus 10 Celsius. Emergency heater and torch are put around the rooms to sustain the warmth. As the situation gets bad, the social situation is also getting bad. Morgan declined the marriage proposal from Aaron and both of them are no longer in a relationship. Oof, tough luck for Aaron I guess. I think the rejected proposal can be heard around the world because the garbage gang is sending their team to raid my base. The first wave come from the right but it was a no problem, they went down one by one. The second wave is also easy to defend because of the pillbox. One of the raiders dropped a go juice. It will be great for Asli to sustain his dependency. The last man fled the battle but Norris cut up to him. I arrest Ether first before he throw punch like someone and then give him first aid. Day 40 to 45, not much happened. Some yaks wanders into the map. I do plan to domesticate them but emergency food can also work. The temperature in the morning is still minus indoor or even outdoor. I just noticed that some of my prisoners got frostbite. Whoops. Later, my colony has a party near the fire because it's too damn cold. Thankfully, the cold snap is over because the situation is just getting dire. Food is running thin and the corpse don't want to grow in the cold. Day 46, Richard tries to convert Asli by having a conversion ritual. It's an effective ritual to reduce the certainty and also book buff for all members who attend the ritual. I have a plan to create some sort of greenhouse, putting the plant under the roof. I have a mod called Dub Skylight, a mod that adds skylight in a constructed roof, so the plants are safe inside the roof. But when I construct the walls, the steels are running out. Oh god. The horror when I just noticed that I had less than 200 steel. Trust me guys, I'm not bad at this game. Most of the time I have a mental issue, not a steel issue. So I told them to mine a nearby steel outside the base. It's dangerous, but I hope it's fine. Changing the wall to use cement instead of steel. Nothing much happened on day 47. Until Ruben Big Bone Buddy not only damaged the chair, he also destroyed the chair. A man hunting tortoise. 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 A man hunting tortoise enter the area. They slowly and steadily approach the base while Morgan mines the steel. She really want this steel to be mined first more than any other. Later night, the tortoise arrive in front of the base. They become a nice target practice for my colonists to train their shooting, and also for additional leaks for our storage. I continue building the greenhouse by putting the roof first and then the skylight. Now the plants are safe below the roof, and the temperature can be adjusted using AC or a heater. While smelting the steel for a skylight, a sango page is looking for a safe place for meeting. They have some items to offer, but I accept them for the hyperlink. They begin their mating as soon as they arrive at the meeting location. Phil is having his prayer when both of them have their meeting. A evil whisper fills the air, so scary and uncomfortable. I suggest you get out of there, Phil. One of the Sanjo Pays offer himself to join the bunker. 
but I suspect they want to spread their influence to the other world. Hmm, I reject him, not because of that, of course. Yes, they have some nice abilities, but Sangu Page has plenty of needs and drawbacks to fill, like Blood Home Again and the rest. It's a good colonist, but too much hassle to take care, for now. Completing the greenhouse, now the plants are safe under the roof. At night, they do a ranger jubilee to raise their moods, and it's a beautiful event where friendly visitors come to our base and leave a gift. Day 56 until 57, a mad boomer loop inside my base again. Maybe it feels lonely after both of its friends die. The farm was already protected by a wall, so I don't need to worry about it setting fire to my farm. Other than that, I was planning for a research building below the storage room. An extortion demand from the shosh. I postponed it for a bit, not to prepare some silver, but to get my colonies in their position. They sent an attack after I reject the deal. I tried to use the howitzer, but it all missed and cannot be used anymore. Our firepower and pillbox are more than enough to defend the base. It's a slaughter, the enemy is shredded and the last one flees the battle. While the reacts were panicking away, I sent three people to chase after the fleeing raider, and Aran just sniped the person while running. It's time to pick up potential new recruits from the downer raiders. I got Wap. He is a melee masochist, perfect for our melee soldier and crafter. While Kin is just an assassin, his art skill will be useful in creating more statues. Finally, the neuro flower and wool can be harvested, while the side will need a bit more growing. Now I can make some go juice and no need to worry about Asli dependence anymore. On day 60, Randy sent a solar flare to our base, and Morgan fought with a rat. This can be late. Later in the afternoon, the fire home is attacking from multiple angles. The left side is crowded, but on the right side, only two people there. They have pretty decent skill to help the base, so while waiting for the raid to start, I send Aaron, Asli, and Ruben to capture those two. They fight back and set Ruben on fire, but my colonists knock them down and kidnap them. Norris tend to Ruben and Aaron first before returning to their posts. The first wave of attack start by running in one by one, easy to pick off by the pillbox and my colonists. One raider tries to flee while picking up his friend but fails at the living part. A down raider named Zuvi has some decent skill and passion. I kidnap Zuvi before the second group attack. The second wave of attack start and just like the first group got massacred, leaving only Tis and Laha to survive the battle. While Laha has some decent skill, Tis almost doesn't have any skill. He's a teenager warrior with only some burning passion, but low on skills. He also has a tobacco addiction which is worse because I don't have any. I pretend I'm not seeing him and just let him die in a battle with honor. However, on day 61, right after the raid, Randy sent a quest of the mech cluster with a toxic spewer active. Damn it, I need to get out there to attack the mech cluster. And then he added a malaria disease to the list. Oof, so many people got malaria. With the toxic spewer hindering the outside activity, I quickly formed a team to attack the mech cluster. On day 62, the battle group arrived at the scene. So many turrets on the other side, but they were sleeping. I moved the attacking team to avoid the detection zone, flanking around the zone and trying to destroy the toxic spewer first. The team breached the door from behind and tries to destroy the toxic spewer while still outside the detection zone. The mech turret are oblivious to the gunfire near them. Finally, the toxic spewer is destroyed and the base is safe again. I can just leave the area and back to the base, but why should I? After all, why not I also try to destroy the mech cluster? The plan is here. Norris and Morgan will be positioned here, distracting most of the turret. Norris has a low shield pack and pops it, protecting Norris and Morgan from incoming fire. Will and Richard will provide support fire here, while Rufus will rush in to destroy the auto charge torrent. All good? All right, let's do this. While my colonists move to their position, Randy threw malaria again to Richard and Rufus. Why, Randy? Why? Anyway, the plan is a go. Nori pops the low shield area and distract all Taran from the other members. Both William and Richard fire on one of the Taran, while Rufus rushes in and tries to bong the auto charge Taran. A lucky shotgun shot from William triggered the infernal Taran to explode. Luckily, Rufus is backing up because the explosive create a chain reaction and destroy all the Taran. 
After defeating the mech cluster, they can go home now. But of course, Randy doesn't enjoy seeing anything go well for my colonists. A cable explodes in the kitchen, and it destroys the butcher table. The fire is turning my kitchen room into an oven. Thankfully, my colonists able to beat the fire out. With so much people need to tend, the medicine supply is dwindling. With also low food, I need to slay the animals for food and early harvest the rice. A Protheses trader comes by, and they have medicine to trade. This will make sure my colony survive malaria. Day 64 to 67, not much happened, but the ranger fair is lifting their boat up. It's a fun ranger fair and a nice plus 5 mood effect with an ancient complex near the base. I start building a quarry on the left of the research room. This thing can be quite OP when your colonists are mostly mining focus. Rock and rolling stone! After the quarry is complete, Richard tries mining the quarry in the pouring rain. His first successful mining had 5 components. I received an outlander pollution dump quest. They want to deliver some toxic waste pack for some reward. I take it for the skill trainers. While yes, I have some waste pack on my base now, but it's not my problem yet. So like any normal player does, I dump it far away from the base. I promise you I will clean it up later. Because those doesn't have many skills, I give her the intellect and melee skill trainer. At least she become a researcher now. Finally, the multi-analyzer is complete, which takes very long time. Now, I need to research medicine production and then drill for oil. Ether falls because of a site dependency. I have the drug, but the colonist doesn't want to apply it. Why? After several minutes of wondering about ideology forbidden, I open my ideology and there it is. Drug use for medical or social only. Administration of hard drugs is forbidden. Oh no, I thought dependency was a medical problem. I mean, you will die if you don't take it. But yeah, all my colonist ideology is the same, so I cannot administer the drug to him. I then search for how to change the ideology in the mid game. Morning time of day 71. While searching for the solution right from the mech hive, they used the tamper to open the mountain, creating their own path towards the base. I actually planning to dig those mountains, but this also worked. I will take the battle outside the bunker by positioning my colonies for ambush. At the end of the battle, my colony had plenty of mechanoid to salvage. Okay, back to ideology problem. I found out how to change the ideology in mid game, but it required a dev mode. All right, so you need to go to the settings, turn on that dev mode. You then go to the ideology, check dev edit mode, and change the preset. Easy, but for real, I swear, I just changed the social drug into none. So I could administer the hard drug to my prisoner. Okay, day 72 to 74. My colonist has been struck with plague, but now almost half of the colonists got sick. I hope the medicine supply is enough because we are in the middle of researching medical production. Allies need help with keeping some people for 25 days for persona core. I need that persona core, so I accept them. Later at night, the prisoner stage a prison break. I'm already keeping them well. And this is how they repay my kindness? William and Aaron are nearby and ready to fight this ungrateful prisoner. Because the prison break yesterday night, I plan a new prison room, so they do not stage prison break so much. It will have so many doors to delay them. It is also near bedroom, so it is much easier to subdue them later. Wokyon has been recruited and now joins as my colonist. One of the prisoners has a medical emergency because of extreme infection. Well, looks like he is not gonna survive this one. May he rest in peace. While most of my colonists sleep at night, a mech cluster lands close to the base. 
They have a weather controller, a couple of turrets, some mechanoid, and a high shield that protect incoming mortar rounds. They are just standing there, menacingly. I'm not going to deploy an attack team just yet. Instead, wait until the mech high shield recharge in two days and mortar it from a distance. Rufus called now, construct a reinforced barrel for the Houtzer, hoping it will be finished before the high shield recharge. Evening later, I notice Wakyon wants to grab a slide near the mech cluster, but I suspect she wants the action by herself. I restrict the radius of some working tables so my colonists do not accidentally wake up the mech cluster. Day 77 to 78. The prison is done. A little dirty, but it's going to be just mine for the prisoner to rest. Three rooms for the prisoner to sleep, while this room is for the recruitment purpose. Remember the unwaveringly loyal prisoner? This room is for them. Suve so will test the new method of recruitment. I put him in a room to watch some TV shows, and somehow later, he fell from the chair. Maybe laughing too much for watching the comedy show. How clumsy he is. I help him up and let him rest for some hours. Notice that he no longer has the unwaveringly loyal, which he can be now recruited and converted. The reinforced barrel is ready and waiting for the battle. The high shield is recharging and my colonist is at their fighting station. Norris fired the first shot at the mech cluster and it slammed into the weather controller while destroying the high shield. The following shot hit the structure and waking up the mechanoid. They are now making their way to the bunker. I destroy the weather controller before moving on to the torrent. The cluster bombs set off a chain reaction that destroy nearly all of the torrent. I accidentally kill an innocent llama. Sorry about that llama. My colonists kill the militar and fighter, leaving only the centipede closing in on the base. A rabbit ran right in front of the centipede and got killed accidentally by my colonists. The centipede is defeated with the help of Hodzer, and only the wooden structure is damaged. Norris fired the Hodzer at the remaining turret, and the match cluster was taken care of. Ruben is taking the winning seat down and almost break the chair again. The AT Richard tries to convert Asli again by using the ritual, and it's a masterful ritual. Not only does Asli accept their ideology, but everyone also gains a plus six mood. Day 81. While watching my colonists working, a raid comes from Pulum. They are using cyphers to breach a weak spot. I believe they will knock down this wall based on their landing location in the lower right area of the map. My colonists are ready on their position and Norris men the Houtzer. Norris sent the first shot and it hit directly into the Grenadier. By the second man movement, my guess is now correct. I call everyone to the back where I create a firewall and wait for them to breach. Aaron used the pillbox and is ready to kill the raider. The Houtzer kills some more raiders outside the base before they breach the wall. They fled after suffering significant losses, with my colonists creating a wall of fire and the pillbox. I then check on the raiders who are still alive once the raid is done. They both have impressive skill set, but they will not live long. My colonists perform first aid to keep them alive. I accidentally press the strip button and Richard removed the main clothes. Whoops. I hope he doesn't need that clothes. I reinforce the vulnerable point using some main walls. At the very least, sappers need additional time if they breach that area. Day 82 to 89. Believe it or not, not much happened until the waste pack infestation on day 84. Someone disturbed the cocoon and the insect emerged from the floor. They start attacking the room. Damn, they got the lamp. My colonies crush them into the room, spraying them with bullets. The research drill for oil was complete on day 85, and I put the console down to see where the oil was. Would you look at that, the oil is in the base. I hope America doesn't come knocking anytime soon. I called the goods trader for 500 silver to purchase their components. It's pretty pricey, but I have a suitable resource to trade with. Garden coffee. One garden coffee costs over 5 silver, and I sell 1000 of them to pay the cost of component and extra silver for more trade. I also sell some plus steel in exchange for more steel. Two new recruits for the base. And there they complete the GM fuel refinery research. It's time to plan for oil drilling and refinery on the left side of the bunker. A ranger surplus merchant arrive at the base and Aurora is after them. This might be a sign of something. 
On day 90, a raid from the garbage gang. They prepared for a moment and stand close to each other. Norris used the hopser and the first shot hit them hard, killing and injuring some riders. The second shot also kills some of them again. The garbage gang immediately start the raid, but remember the surplus ranger before? They helped me fight the raiders with almost no injuries at the end of the battle. I searched for a survivor and one of the downward raiders had exceptional shooting skill. In the evening, a diplomatic marriage from the Red Creek Union again. I reject them again, like always. Day 91 to 95. Randy is entering his sleep mode again because not many happen during those days. I build the oil refinery and the driller. Winnie successfully convert Ether to follow their ideology and in the morning Ether joined the faction. A combat supplier comes in bringing some combat things including two twin M2 HB Taran machine gun. I bought both of them and put it near the walls. This base is more defended day by day. Because the stationary chem fuel generator takes up a lot of space, I like to convert it into a military generator. It's more space effective while also having the same output of 5000 watts. But because it is a permanent object, I must attack it to destroy it. However, my colonies appears cannot damage it even the grenade cannot put a dent in it. I think it's because one of the mods conflict with attacking my object. Oh well. So I just unclaimed the generator. Thanks for the give up your building mod and I let my colony try to attack it again. Now that the large generator has been destroyed, I can place more military generators for oil drilling and chemical refineries. At night, diplomatic marriage again from the Red Onion. They really want my colonies that bad, huh? Day 96, the Fire Nation is attacking again. But I don't need an avatar. This bad boy can shred the enemy from far away. Each Hauser shot kills or doubt the raider. They managed set a tree on fire and then fled after that. I think they had the tree in particular. But when I thought it was the end, a second group began their assault. They have the same fate as the first group. Some people have already been killed before reaching the base by Houtzer. So they scratch the wall with arrows, they run away. When they are fleeing, one Houtzer shot kills two people and injures one of them. I captured him and brought him back to the base. After the raid, there's an event. Can you guess it? That's right. It's right, Creek Union diplomatic marriage again. They are obsessed with my colonies and it's getting too annoying. Day 97, at night, the solar flare hit the base. I thought, no problem, wait for the light to back on. But then, Randy sent me an event that I didn't expect. A blight at Neuro Flowers. It took almost two thirds of my followers, goddammit. I rudely wake up my colonists and order them to cut all the blights. But look at that. Almost all Neuro Flowers are just gone. You can't keep getting away with it! We got a visit from Tax Force 1 for 1 in the early morning. But when they left at night, a mesh cluster landed next to the base. It lands on the group path and they start attacking the mesh cluster. I raided my combat colonists and observed the battle. One of the members discombobulated one of the mechanoid. I'm unsure how he did it, but the mechanoid is stunned by the move. I helped them with a danger close artillery strike, but still, they took some casualties. With the last star and dealt with, I extinguished the fire to prevent it from spreading. Day 99, the shuttle arrived to pick up Minoka and Newt. After I sent them off, the quest was complete and I got the Persona code. Day 100, Randy sent me a parting event after my colonies complete the advanced geothermal. It's a waste pack infestation with several small insects. And just like that, one of the days passed in the bunker. I said this is a nice starting. I have a lot more members to help and of course, a research room with dedicated scientists. Oil was found and extracted, and a greenhouse was built for sustainable food. 
The bunker defense is looking nice, but of course, it's more improvement from the sapper attack. Thank you for watching. Watch this until the end. I'm sorry if my pronouns is bad. And English is not my primary language. So, yeah. I see you in the next video of 200 days to survive in the bunker.